Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank you for watching this video. And I'm going to talk to you very, very important things. Very, very startling things. I'm going to talk about Jesuit attacks in China. This is not the battle that we need to fight. But I'll tell you, according to the Bible, this is the battle of the Lord. The report that I'm going to give you may shock you. You see, I have been working as a minister of the gospel in the last 36 years. It's for kind of a long time, but I have never seen anything like this in my entire life. And I'll tell you, the enemy of the truth is real, and they're serious, and they're intended to hurt us. So we may need to wake up and pray and work for the Lord with such a seriousness. You know, I find in the uh, Second Chronicles and chapter twenty, and Second uh, Second Chronicles chapter twenty, and I want to read from verse fifteen to nineteen. I'm sure that uh, you know this story very well. This is a familiar story uh, uh, about the battle between uh, the Judea and uh, Ammonites and uh, the children of Moab and so forth. As we understand that uh, chapter 20 is describing about the attack, invading of the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, Ammonites and others, they uh, aligned together to attack God's people and uh, against Jehoshaphat to battle. And, uh, you know, Jehoshaphat and the children of Israel, they were helpless. And they knew that they were not up against that kind of battle. The magnitude was too great. So what did they do? They knelt before God. And they began to cry out, out and pray, Lord, what can we do? Please help us. Now in this, in this uh, juncture, this is what they said. And verse 15 I read. And he said, Hearken ye, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, well, actually, a prophet is speaking here. And thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, not dismayed, by reason of the great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. And I'll tell you, this is exactly how I feel right now. The things taking place in China, that is the battle that we are not up against. It's the battle of the Lord. God has to help us. There's nothing we can do to battle about this kind of magnitude. Friends, I solicit your prayers. I solicit your help. Please, listen to this very carefully. And uh, continued, it says this, verse 16. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Aziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the, before the wilderness of Israel. Jeruel, Jeruel, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand be still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. Oh, what a marvelous words that we can uh, read in the scripture. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. That's all I want. If the Lord is with, with us, you know, our model in our ministry, Life for Life, is this. And I always emphasize and tell our staff members this way. If we have the truth, as long as God is with us, there's nothing to be afraid of. We recite this in our prayers, in our meetings all the time. This is all I want. If God is with us, if God is fighting this battle for us, we are safe. We don't have to be afraid in anything. Well, they have great multitudes, great in numbers or wealth, but we don't have to worry about that. God is greater than the one who is in this world. We have the truth, and we are working uh, for the truth and in order to hasten Jesus Christ's coming. As I tell you time to time, unless we prepare China, Jesus has to postpone his second coming. It's that serious. Because one among every three persons in the world are Chinese-speaking people. And that's why God gave us burden, such a burden to preach the three angels' messages to them. Let me uh, go on and read 
uh, verse 18, And Jehoshaphat, the king, bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. That's exactly how I feel. That's what we do. And, and uh, I myself and our staff members and our co-workers, we all sometimes, well, time to time, as a matter of fact, we kneel and in a way, we put our forehead on the floor and we give supplications. We pray to the Lord to help us because this is the Lord's battle and his work. All right? And verse 19 says, And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Now, they are in the battle. They have to fight with the enemy, with the swords and the shields and spears and everything. And yet, what they have done is the correct method of the battle up against the great army such as this. So we are in the same situation. That's how I exactly feel as, I, as I'm talking to you on this video. You see, so what did they do? They formed a praising team. They formed a chorus. And this chorus is moving ahead in the front line. And they, they are singing to God. Singing and praising His mighty work and His power. And God took the battle in His own hand. And He won it. That's exactly what we are expecting in this kind of problem. And I'll tell you, Jesuit's attacks in China is real. What is happening? And I'll tell you, uh, Jesuits located in China, until this time, we did not know their presence in China. They have a vivid and clear and powerful presence in China. And this group of people aligned with the leaders of the Chinese government. I'm talking about the whole government. And then they printed and published books. They are none other than the Spirit of Prophecy books. Can you imagine this? All right. One wealthy person, Seventh-day Adventist, Chinese, uh, invests money and uh, published and, and, and printed uh, Spirit of Prophecy books like this. It's a hard, hard uh, bag. And uh, like this, this is the bag. And uh, very nice printings. You know, this is, as a matter of fact, this is the Acts of Apostles. And let me show you one more thing. Uh, this is the great controversy. See? E.G. White. Mrs. White. This uh, Spirit of Prophecy original. This is a good one. And yet, this Jesuit group, aligned with the Chinese government, got the uh, legal ISDN number. Do you know what is that? That is the permission number to print books legally in China. Oh, we have tried to get that for a long time. We couldn't. We had few numbers from Hong Kong, but not in the mainland. But this time, they made a legal, legal ISDN number to publish counterfeit, fake spirit prophecy books. Let me show you. Exactly the same books. Can you imagine this? It says, E.G. White, Ellen G. White. Same back. And as a matter of fact, uh, this is the prophets and kings. Uh, the contents, the list, exactly the same. And yet they inserted fake words, fake sentences of the Jesuits, Catholic teachings in these books. Oh, what a, what a diabolical works. I mean, I couldn't imagine uh, that uh, they could uh, do a such a thing. Okay, this is the, uh, the these are pages, fake, counterfeit, exactly same cover, a lens white, and the same uh, back cover, and the same list of contents. You see, and then inside they inserted Jesuit teachings, Roman Catholicism. Can you imagine that? So, so they are selling in the in the all kinds of bookstores, especially national approved bookstores. They're selling this, this books in their bookstores. They're, they have a permissions and they have a government 
legal ISDN number on this book. So it's illegal as far as they are concerned. Now this is another counterfeit uh, book. This is the Acts of Apostles. It says E.G. White. And they inserted Roman Catholicism, uh, their thoughts and their teachings, just inserted in, uh, in the pages and here and there slipped in. So people could not really recognize it unless they really understand and know the truth. Okay, look at this. This is the great controversy, counterfeit. When I saw this, I almost fainted. This is the battle of the Lord. My friends, I tell you, my brothers and my sisters in Christ, you got to begin to pray for us. You got to help us. Because this is the battle plan and last battle plan of the devil against China. So we got to do something about this problem. Okay? What did they do? Oh, this is, okay, let me introduce some, some things they slipped in and insert, insulted. Okay, first of all, like... Uh, uh, the um, Petras and Prophets. Uh, in chapter 3, this is the thing they slipped in. Okay? Uh, God have completed creation uh, for six days and then rested. Thus, the Sunday Sabbath became the holiday rest day for the humanity. Can you imagine that? So they just made right here the Sunday is the seventh day, Sabbath. He said, thus, the Sunday Sabbath became the rest and holiday for the humanity. And then let me tell you one more thing. In chapter, chapter 5 of, of this uh, book, and they said, okay, they slipped in the concept of the original sin. And uh, when Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, and human being became the body, became uh, the entity, they need to be re redeemed daily throughout eternity. What does it mean? Need to be redeemed throughout eternity, every day? This is the original sin concept, which means the sin came into our body, in our cells. We cannot do anything about that. This kind of original sin concept, Augustine concept, slipped in. Oh, what a dangerous is that. Let me tell you something about uh, counterfeit um, uh, things in the great controversy. Uh, in page 70, and it says, wow, this is very diabol uh, uh, diabol uh, diabolical. And it says that the uh, father of the Martin Luther was a wicked one. And uh, he was a person uniquely uh, unable to understand. And uh, he was famed to, be, to, be, to become very rude and uh, uh, ridiculous and a wicked person. And, uh, and the people, some people believe that uh, Luther was born in between this devil and a wicked woman. So they really attacked and assassinated the character of Luther in this way. Um, um, and also... In the page uh, 73, in that counterfeit great controversy in Chinese, they said that uh, uh, you know, Luther fell in love with a woman, Bora. So in order to marry with her, as a priest, in order to marry with her, uh, she began a work called Reformation. Uh, he began to revolt against the church, which was God's church, they said here. And, uh, uh, and that they, have had, they had had uh, unclean, relationships was going on a few years. And then finally, in order to marry her, he began to revolt, which means he began to start a reformation. That's how he described in order to assassinate the character of the Luther. Isn't that, isn't that incredible? And I'll tell you, this kind of incredible attacks of just which are going on in China as I am talking to you right now. All right? For instance, okay, page 203. 203 says that uh, while, while the Reformation is being wrote, Roman Catholicism uh, founded a, a great, uh, great um, uh, group called Jesuits. They established a group called a Jesuits. Now, they were excellent in evangelism, he said. And then, uh, well... Uh, they said that uh, while the Reformations utilized an evangelist to go around different countries to 
uh, to speak and to teach about Jesus Christ and the Bible, and they could not reach, they could not even follow the basics of the work of the wonderful Jesuits. And then they explain about the wonderful works of the Jesuits' methodology in uh, erecting uh, hospitals and orphanages and the educational systems and schools, and then and then uh, train people to become a true disciples and uh, evangelist. So what they're saying is that uh, the work of the evangelism in Reformation could not even reach the basic method of the godly uh, mission movement of the Jesuits. Isn't that diabolical? Those who read this, especially uh, living in China, who do not really understand the history and the truth, they may fall into this. We need God's help. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. We need holy angels to guide our books, to guide our ministry in China right now. All right? Now, page 210 says that uh, Revelation, book of Revelation, uh, is a mythical book. Can you imagine? It's a mythical book that has prophetic characteristics. So you, don't really, you cannot really understand and comprehend that book, it says. All right, and uh, probably a couple more. Um, page 219, page 219 in Counterfeit Great Controversy in Chinese says that, uh, all right, uh, in the time of millennium, the, the souls of righteous people will fly around all over the universe with Jesus Christ. I mean, souls flying around in the millennium? This is very interesting. And then page 249 says that uh, translation of the Bible that can be used interdenominationally is impossible. So they discredit the trust of the reading and studying of the Bible, the Word of God. And I'll tell you, this is disgusting. I don't know what to say. You see, this kind of magnitude is going on in China right now. And I'll tell you, my friends, we need help. What kind of help? We need the Holy Spirit. We need the help. We need the great army, holy army from heaven. As God helped the army of Jehovah, as they went out to sing, when they stand against the army, the great multitude, they begin to sing and praise God. That's exactly what we need to do. And that's what we are doing. We are praying every day. And I dream about this. And night, and my heart is is going out out for them every day. Those faithful workers, our book evangelists, our staff workers, who are working day and night faithfully. And I, my heart go, go out for goes out for them every day. And I pray for them every day. They're like my own children, my friends. Friends, as I tell as I tell you that I want to solicit your prayers for our ministry, and your help. And uh, allow me to read a couple of uh, paragraphs uh, we can find in Great Controversy, page 234. Listen to this. This is the, uh, uh, the writings of Mrs. White regarding to the Jesuit work. Throughout Christendom, Protestantism was managed by formidable foes. The first triumphs of the Reformation passed. Rome summoned new foes, hoping to accomplish its destruction. At this time, the order of the Jesuits was created. The most cruel, unscrupulous, and powerful of all the champions of popery. Cut off from earthly ties and human interest, dead to the claims of natural affection. Reason and conscience wholly silenced. They knew no rule, no tie, but that of their order and order, and no duty but to extend its power. The gospel of Christ had enabled its adherents to meet danger and endure suffering. Undismayed by cold, hunger, toil, and poverty, to abhor the banner of the truth in the face of the work, the dungeon and the stake. This is how our forefathers, for the truth, had work and sacrificed their lives. And yet, and then continued, Sister White said that, to combat these forces, Jesuitism 
inspired its followers with a fanaticism that enabled them to endure like dangers and opposed to the power of the truth all the weapons of deception. There was no crime too great for them to commit, no deception too base for them to practice, no disguise too difficult for them to assume. Vowed to perpetual poverty and humility, it was their studied aim to secure wealth and power, to be devoted to the overthrow of Protestantism and the re-establishment of the paper supremacy. Can you imagine that? This has been the work of the devil. And I'll tell you what, I've seen it as exactly being installed and being practiced it is still going on in China right now. It is very apparent. It is vivid. And uh, we are shocked. Okay? And uh, through this persecution, and uh, at first time, about 15, 15 our staff members got into jail, and then one by one, they were released, and then now still we have four of them in the prison right now. And I want you to, uh, I would like to ask you to pray for them. Um, through these persecutions, something great happened. God helped us to, to notice, to really pinpoint and to know who are the spies. So weeds and terrors has been separated. Now we understand who has been invaded, who has been infiltrated, the Jesuits. And some Jesuits have been infiltrated as our book workers. And I'll tell you, we had such a suffering and pains and heartaches. But these people, their acting skills are superior. I mean, the way they acted, the, the way they tried to persuade our people. Now it has been opened in the light, daylight. We understand who they are, what they have been doing. Even while they were selling our books or giving out uh, our books, they Little by little, they mixed with the Roman Catholic books. Can you imagine that? Oh, it just, it just broke our hearts. So we have to pray to God so that we are going to have real aid and support from heavenly army every day in China. You see? And uh, uh, let, me, let me read you the next paragraph. In the same page of the same book, a great the Great Controversy, page 234, it says, When appearing as members of their order, they wrote a garb of sanctity, visiting prisons and hospitals, ministering to the sick and the poor, professing to have renounced the world and bearing the sacred, sacred name of Jesus, who went about doing good, but under this blameless exterior, the most criminal and deadly purposes were often concealed. It was a fundamental principle of the order that the end justifies the means. By this code, lying, theft, perjury, assassinations were not only pardonable, but commendable. Can you imagine this? When they served the interest of the church, under various disguises, the Jesuits worked their way into office of state, climbing up to the counselors of kings and shaping the policy of nations. They became servants to act as spies upon their masters. They established colleges for the sons of princes and nobles, and schools for the common people, and the children of Protestant parents were drawn into an observance of popish rites. All the outward pomp and display of the Romish worship was brought to bear to confuse the mind and dazzle and captivate the imagination, and thus the liberty for which the fathers had toiled and bled was betrayed by the sons. The Jesuits rapidly spread themselves over Europe, and whatever they, want, they went, there followed a revival of popery. Oh, my friends, Jesus Christ is coming soon. This is one of the remarkable signs of soon return of Jesus Christ. And what do we need to do at this time? What do we need to do for China? There's millions of people, more than 100 millions of Christians, maybe 13, 100, uh, 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 maybe uh, 130 millions, I don't know how many, but tremendous amount of Christians are living in China. 
We got to do something about that. We got to prepare them to receive the letter rain to finish the work. I'll tell you, many Adventists uh, think that, uh, okay, loud cry is going to come. When we receive the letter rain, and automatically, naturally, we are going to stand up all of a sudden, <clears throat> and then we'll be able to uh, give loud cry. My friends, that will not be the case. You see, Sister White said very clearly, the books that we have printed and scattered, those books are going to give loud cry in the end. What does it mean? The internet ministries, uh, the DVDs and CDs and books that we have, uh, have prepared and spread, those things are going to give loud cry for us in the end. My brothers and my sisters in Christ, what we need to do at this point about this matter is to raise up the youth army in China. That's exactly what we are doing. We are going to raise up as many you know, faithful, lawyer, young people as possible in China. That's exactly what we are doing. We cannot tell you where and how many, but that's what we're doing. And that by God's grace, we have been very successful in doing this. And in wiser method, we need to go under the ground, not really digging uh, the, the ground and go under, but you know what I'm talking about, underground work. Internet work. More than that, you know, the best way to evangelize or teach people of the truth, three angels' messages in China, is to have an internet television. Internet television work. Oh, yes, we have been spreading the truth, videos and so forth, and CDs and so forth, and books and so forth through website. But now we are venturing. Uh, to have live teachings and preachings and seminars in internet television channels. And I'll tell you, we are going to secure very powerful uh, streaming server. And then what we're going to do is that uh, actually they can do a live broadcasting from China. And those contents are going to be carried to our computer in the United States and then we are going to shoot it back to the United States. Maybe the lap time will be 1.5 or 2 seconds but it is going to be live. It is going to be live streaming internet television. This is going to be remarkable. This is going to be powerful, very, very efficient. And I'll tell you, we are going to make this ready in a couple of months. And uh, if the Holy Spirit helps us, this is going to be loud cry. Loud cry does not mean that uh, as we are just praying and do not really do the work, work, work to, to win souls, evangelism, in seriousness, in our, in our uh, dedication and surrendering, and just expect the whole letter rain of Holy Spirit will pour out and will all of a sudden stand up and uh, give loud cry. That is not going to happen in that fashion. As a matter of fact, God is going to use our products, our work, our method uh, already we are implementing. And then God is going to bless us. And then if Holy Spirit bless our internet ministry, internet television channels, so that millions of people can come in and watch, sometimes VODs and sometimes live streaming preachings and teachings. Now that is going to be loud cry. Don't you think so? The loud cry is something that we have published, printed, or made, or produced. God is going to bless our method, our, our sacrifices, and our dedications. He is going to bless us with His Holy Spirit and Holy Angels. And then bring the many attentions of many, many people and the multitudes and groups to our products. And it is going to be loud cry. Friends, Jesus Christ is coming soon. We got to do something about this. This incredible Jesuit attacks in China. We are ready. We trust God's power. We know that this battle belongs to God. This is the war of Jesus Christ. I know He's doing it. He's helping us. I ask you, and I solicit your help and your prayers. Please remember, may God bless you. May God bless you, your family, in this 
holiday seasons. I want Jesus Christ come to come soon. I do not want to stay in this world any longer. Thank you for watching and hearing me. God bless you.